Natasha, your FinTech and innovation program at Hitachi is very different from those programs of uh, other companies mm -hmm. in a way that you innovate from within and then you test the product in real world. Can you tell me a little bit more about how that works? Sure. Um, so it's actually different in, in two different ways, I would say. So Hitachi has a very large and long history in operational technology. That is, we literally build the products ourselves, the trains, the MRI machines, um, the ATM machines. And from those um, machinery and operational technology, we are now layering on the information technology. So we're combining OT with IT to create and, and repurpose some of the data that we're collecting from our operational technology to financial uh, meaningful use cases. It could be risk management, derivatives, um, anything that, that banks or insurance companies or even stock exchanges could be interested in. Um, and the other thing is that we are, we're innovating from within because I work for the R&D organization of Hitachi, but we're also very focused on open innovation these days. So a lot of our platforms are either open sourced or we're working with startups to sort of add these additional technologies into a larger sort of full service platform. Mm -hmm. And we test these technologies often with our customers. We like to have um, a customer use case that we can actually test these algorithms out so that we don't just build products and push it into the sort of market, but also get feedback immediately. Right. And you focus specifically on FinTech. Yes. And so I'm curious, how do you prioritize those projects uh, in your lab? Because obviously you have so many ideas for your open innovation model. How do you prioritize? Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit of um, what we would like to work on. So some of our scientists, you know, they have a, a clear preference to work on certain um, deep learning models or uh, we made a, a heavy investments in blockchain technology so we would like to continue testing out that blockchain and um, so those are our two main research themes our data science and blockchain technologies mm -hmm. um, but we've also built our own quantum computer and so now we're trying to test out some use cases in that sense so wherever we've made some um, investments we would like to sort of continue and, and stick with it it's a, it's sort of an Asian you know Japanese long-term perspective that we're taking but of course it also really depends on what kind of data we can receive from customers and, that, and that's you know in the financial world that's quite restrictive Restricted. Certainly. Mm -hmm. And speaking about that, uh, being in, in the business of innovation means to, to see something that's not here yet yes. and that other people don't really realize it's going to be here. Mm -hmm. So what is your vision for the bank of the future and for the investment, manage, for the investment management company of the future? Yeah, so that's a very interesting question. We actually did quite a bit of a research on the future of fintech. And what we did is we tried to look 10 years out um, what we're doing is we're collecting signals in today's world from news, from reports, and we're trying to make interesting combinations and then look, you know, could that be valid 10 years out? So some of the trends that we saw is, you know, around this all-seeing data. And that means, you know, literally there will be so much data available. You have, you know, you have so much to either sell to your customers on based on the data you have or create new products. So what is this all-seeing data going to do in the bank? Um, there's a lot about robotics and AI and replacing jobs. Um, we still feel that the human will be in the loop. So in 10 years from now, there won't be this autonomous, you know, hedge fund robot running a hedge fund. We still have jobs. Yeah, we still have jobs. I, I don't believe that. So um, we also see a lot of um, hopefully new financial products because we, I mean, to be honest, we haven't really reinvented a lot of the financial instruments really. Um, but with all the sharing economy, um, you know, with people trying to buy houses together and with trillions of dollars that have to be transferred in wealth from the baby boomers to the other, to the next generation underneath, we, we hopefully will see a lot of financial products around these sort of major trends as well. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks.